Yeah, with me and Pedro, it was sometimes like father-daughter energy, but most of the time it was like two annoying siblings. I also felt like I was his dad sometimes. Sometimes I was the father. Most of the time, Pedro was the daughter. Why are you so important? I think what really impressed him was the fact that I didn't turn into a monster. Hello, I'm Bella Ramsey. I play Ellie in The Last of Us, and I'm going to be discussing some fan theories for Vanity Fair. Be warned, there are spoilers. There will be sensitive discussions. But, I mean, if you're worried about spoilers, you should go and watch the show before watching this. You should watch the show anyway. This was posted by Zman8. Ellie isn't actually immune. The cordyceps are just acting really, really, really slowly, causing her to slowly go insane. It is well established that you quickly lose your mind before turning into a runner. This transition into insanity is usually extremely fast, but my theory is that with Ellie, it's extremely slow. Uh, this scares me. Oh, Ellie is definitely insane, but like, aren't we all? I'm a bit insane. Does that mean cordyceps is slowly growing in my body? Ellie's quite violent and quite like impulsive, which I guess the the clickers sort of are. They're running purely on instinct. But I feel like that's just who she is, but maybe like that's amplified by the slow burning cordyceps. I don't really want to think about it. Yeah, I don't see why this couldn't be true. This is by GNU Linux. They may be able to cure humanity by infecting a generation of mothers. Ellie is immune because her mother was infected shortly before giving birth. Reproducing these circumstances would mean infecting every birthing mother, curing a generation of newborns. I feel like they've just solved the problem. They've just like saved the world with this theory. Like this is genius. I mean, the mothers would have to consent and like be okay with being infected, but I feel like you'd get a good selection of people who would be up for it. Yeah, this is cool. Hacquistador. Hacquistador, I quite like that. I think the point of this series is that Ellie is special, but it's not the immunity that makes her important, it's fucking Ellie. She's strong, she's brave, she's capable of violence, but has a huge, unbreakable heart, huge in capital letters. Everyone sees it. Her principal back in the QZ, Riley, Marlene, Tess, Joel, David, everyone sees it, and almost everyone feels an intense instinct to protect her. I think that Ellie is going to grow into a leader who unites the survivors in a way that might most resemble some combination of Kathleen and her brother Michael. The only other outcome would have left the world quite possibly even worse off than it was before and without Ellie. Joel made the right decision, even if for the wrong reasons, and he will never know why. So I think this is basically like the underlying story of the whole thing. The immunity is definitely one of the things that makes her special, but like fucking Ellie is also what makes her special. Yeah, I think like this is like, she delved beneath like the surface level meaning. Oh, don't ask me if Joel made the right decision. I mean, I think he made the right decision. And I think like most people agree. From like the reaction to the series as well, I think more people are like, he definitely made the right decision. I don't think it was even a choice. I don't even think it was a decision for him. He just, it, there was no other option other than to save her because he didn't save, he did save the world, but like his world, that's so cringy, but it's kind of true. Kletzi underscore camp 6627. Marlene already knew Ellie was immune and used Riley to get her. In this theory, her character is even more integral to the story because she plays a more critical role, becoming more than Ellie's love interest. Riley unknowingly lays the seeds for motivating Ellie to sympathize with the Fireflies. Why would Marlene recruit a 16-year-old girl simply because, as Riley put it, Marlene was impressed by watching me sneak around? No, Riley was recruited because Marlene knew she was Ellie's roommate and close friend. Marlene already knew Ellie was immune before she got bitten by the fact that she told her Firefly subordinates not to kill her on the spot. She used Riley to get Ellie on board with the Fireflies. I don't want to believe this is true. I want to believe that Riley loves Ellie and that there's no ulterior motive because that's too much of a betrayal otherwise. But I mean, it's valid. Riley leaving for three weeks and whatever is like part of this whole scheme. It would like ruin Ellie if this was true. I mean, she already has trust issues, right? So this would just, I feel like she would never be able to trust anybody again. And I feel like her relationship with Joel would be different also because of that. Like if she found out that this was the case, like she'd start to question everything. Oh no, I can't believe this. Now it's gonna play on my mind. This one was posted by Nova Euphoria. The Last of Us, Joel's real reason. Joel thought that sacrificing Ellie wasn't worth saving humanity. The same humanity that killed his daughter the same people that kill each other every day. I think the giraffes symbolize true innocence, the vanishing grace of childhood. This is beautiful. When Joel looked back at the giraffes and they were almost gone, he realized that innocence has left this world and the world needed innocence. People like Ellie. They didn't need a cure because the cordyceps wasn't the real disease. It's what people have become. Yeah. 
true truth i'm trying to think of like what the youth say like when something's true oh period i feel like that episode with david and ellie shows that humans are far scarier and capable of like far worse damage because they also know what they're doing cordyceps are, are much more instinctive so i feel like that's really the, the real fear sl4g which looks like slag Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, you are. Okay, good. Maybe Joel is her actual dad. Whoa! Whoa, that would have. No. How? That would have meant that Anna. Oh, yeah. I guess Joel is the age to be her dad. Whoa, this is blowing my mind a little bit. That meant like Anna and Joel would have hooked up somewhere. When? How? I don't want to think about that. Imagine if Joel is her actual dad. But um, she doesn't really look like Sarah in any way. So I feel like they definitely. They couldn't even be half sisters maybe they could maybe joel is her dad uh oh i think joel is inherently a good dad i think he was like born to be a dad he has dad energy for sure he would definitely do like bad dad dancing at a party with me and pedro it was sometimes like father daughter energy but most of the time it was like two annoying siblings who like love each other and annoy everybody else i also felt like i was his dad sometimes i told him to like breathe but, like it's okay you're, you're doing a good job, take a breath. He also did that a lot to me. We're very, very equal on the father-daughter playing ground. This is why I say we're more like siblings, but he definitely like sometimes was like super dad to me, like super dad. This is by Throw the Clown Away 20. I really quite enjoy that name. I watched a TikTok this morning that theorized that the doctors the Fireflies employ are all med school dropouts. No trained, experienced doctor is going to be so impatient and or stupid that they'd get access to one immune person on earth and just go, okay, let's hack up her brain and hope for the best. FFS. Brain biopsies are a thing that exists and don't require anyone to die, but you don't exactly learn to do that in your first year. Mm, that's true. I mean, no one's really been in like formal education for a while. The world was destroyed 20 years ago and they're just gonna like chop out a brain and not even think about the fact that maybe you could chop out the brain and save humanity. And Ellie, like, why didn't they think of that? Maybe they just really hate me. Okay, the next one, Macklin Vance said, I just realized, Another clue Ellie is immune. She's eating a breaded chicken sandwich while Joel and Tess are eating beef jerky. If bread equals cordyceps, Ellie is casually flaunting her immunity in front of Joel and Tess. Hmm, this could be an interesting thing. But I do think that one of the reasons Joel and Tess are eating beef jerky is just because like that's all they've got. I really don't know how they survived though. But the bread thing, I don't know if that's still the case, like maybe Cordyceps got into the initial like one batch of flour, but now more bread is being produced, new batches are being made that don't contain cordyceps, but can they really check for that? I don't know. At evil spork of death. I haven't used a spork in so long. I interpreted Ellie cutting that zombie with her knife as her testing how human the guy is. She wanted to see the fungus to feel better about it really no longer being human. I think that this Ellie cutting the zombie with her knife, that scene, she's thinking of like Riley and Tess and being like, you killed. Riley and Tess, essentially, like the infected guy. It's like, even though it wasn't you, it was you. It's like your people, you killed them. It's like her first moment of real violence and like revenge. Yeah, she's kind of evil in that moment. I'm kind of into it. Thank you for watching me read these out and listening to my thoughts. Enjoy The Last of Us if you haven't seen it already and watch out for season two. It'll be a while, sorry.